Hey everyone, and welcome to another live Q and A. Let me get the uh, thing set up so I can see the questions and make sure the volume is shut off here as well. Otherwise, I'll have a lot of noise occurring. Um, anyway, so uh, welcome to another live Q and A. Um, as I've told people, I'm going to be doing these every other uh, Sunday, conceivably, unless something happens, like unless I get sick or something. Um, so I'll be rolling these out every other Sunday. And uh, and usually probably around noon is when I'm going to do these Q and A's. So like every other Sunday around noon. So the next one is going to be. People are starting to show up now. The next one is going to be on the 29th, October 29th, uh, at noon. So just so you guys can put things in your schedule, because people are always asking when the next Q and A's. I'm trying to keep it consistent. So um, drop your comments into the uh, sidebar, uh, and I'll be able to read them. And uh, let's get this party started. Um, Johnny says, first one. Uh, welcome, Johnny. Corey, how the hell do you do it, bro? You're four years from 40, and yet you look like you're in your 20s. Um, <laughs> uh, I get told that a lot. I, I mean, I, I have a good friend um, in the city. He's um, he's actually uh, from Ukraine. He's uh, We hang out a lot in the city, uh, him and his girlfriend. Uh, I met his girlfriend recently, too. And he actually told her that how old I was, and she was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean... It's just, I, I would say it's vegan diet, I'm sure. I'm sure it's genetics. Um, I moisturize my face. I wear sunscreen. I'm going to be in the sun. Um, I don't smoke. I don't drink. These are things you can do that can help you. Try to minimize stress. There's so many things you can do to stop aging uh, at a cellular level. You know, um, and, and people think this is like kind of counterintuitive, but coffee. I drink a lot of coffee, and coffee has been shown to improve telomere length, fight cancer, uh, improve longevity. Oh, and intermittent fasting. I do intermittent fasting, which raises growth hormone naturally. Um, one study showed like a thousand percent increase in growth hormone from just fasting 16 hours a day. These are all things you can do to slow down or even somewhat halt aging for a period of time. Um, yeah, that's that's my advice. But just just take care of yourselves. Really, lift weights too. These are all things you can do to take care of yourselves. Um, uh, somebody says, what time? Uh, around noon. Like I, I started like two minutes late today, um, but around 12 o'clock is when I'd like Eastern time. That is noon Eastern time. Uh, every other Sunday is when I'm going to run these Q&As. So you want to put that in your calendar. Like I said, unless I get sick or there's some kind of an emergency, I don't conceivably see why I won't be able to do it. Uh, and I figure noon is pretty good for people on the West Coast, out here in the East Coast as well, as well as in Europe, at least in Western Europe. Um, I mean, I can't, I can't accommodate everybody's schedule, unfortunately, because I'm one guy and uh, I, I have things I got to do as well. But noon, I think, is pretty good. Uh, so uh, Eastern time, U.S. Uh, what are the best studies showing how bad dairy is? Well, there was, there's one that I've, uh, I've cited a lot lately uh, when talking about estrogen and soy, soy and estrogen, that everyone likes to bring up. But because the, the people who bring this up are people who promote whey and milk products, dairy products. Um, that shows that the hormones, because of the hormones in lactating cows, and it's animal hormones, by the way, those hormones, those estrogens are, and other hormones are absorbed by men, by children as well, and it actually affects not only their testosterone levels, but in the case of children, their sexual development, negatively affects their sexual development. Now, there's going to be people who say, but we've been drinking milk, you know, for centuries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and... and you know, it, people can smoke cigarettes for a period of time and not get cancer. It doesn't mean that it's good for you in the long term. It doesn't mean that you'd be better off not consuming it. Outliers are not an argument for anything. Um, you know, I wouldn't smoke cigarettes just because, you know, some people can get away with 20, 30 years of smoking before they develop cancer. You know, it, it's plain Russian roulette. I wouldn't fuck with that. So uh, that's my take on that. Uh, but that's that's one of the best studies I've seen recently on milk. Um, I'm sure Richard Vegan Gaines has a great number of studies on the negative effects of dairy. Um, I could dig some up as well, too. Uh, actually, I actually haven't really done a dairy video before. It might be a good idea to do a video about the horrors of dairy. I've never really covered that topic in too much depth. Um, yeah. Actually, that brings something else to mind. If you guys would like to see videos, specific videos about specific topics, or you want to see me rebut somebody, whatever, you know, bring, let me know, because sometimes I don't really watch a lot of YouTube, so there might be people that are saying stupid shit that I don't know about. So if you, like, maybe post it in the comments, I'd be happy to do videos upon request as well. 
Um, Corey, how do you mentally process coming up third and second in a competition? Um, I've, I've been there. Look, you know, and I don't just mean in like in like fighting or anything, but like in other competitions, like in art competitions, for instance, when I was younger, um, I did a lot of competitive art um, where I would enter, you know, artwork into a show and try to win. And I've come in second and third before. I've come in runner up. I've not even placed sometimes. Like that's just part of life. There's somebody better. You know, there's always somebody better. And it's also in the case of things like art or in the case of bodybuilding, it's a, it's a lot of it's relative. The person is judging you. They're judging aesthetics, but their opinion. It's really an opinion-based thing. Um, the best thing you can do is really try to see who learn from it. Really, that's that's the simple answer. See why the person that won, why you think they won. Like what? Be honest with yourself. What did they have over you? Where if it's fighting, did they have a specific technique that you just couldn't handle? Were they? Did they have more heart? Um, if it's bodybuilding, do they have a better body part? You know, if it's powerlifting, were their numbers just better? You know, you can figure out, obviously, sometimes very painfully, obviously, what it is they did better and try to improve in that area the best you possibly can and and that, and that use it as a stepping stone to make yourself better. If you didn't win first place, try to make yourself better so you can win first place next time. Don't see it as, um, I mean, it is defeat to a degree, but don't see it as the end, you know, it's not the end, it's it's just, uh, you know, a, a, it's a roadblock, you know, and learn from it, that's the best thing I can possibly advise to you, I mean, and from somebody who has lost before, you know, it sucks to lose, but you have to look at it as a chance to learn why you lost and improve, um, don't, don't wallow in self-defeat, don't think it's because you suck, it just means that somebody was better at that point in time, so, um, and that will always be the case. There's always going to be someone better, even if you haven't met them yet. That's just how it is. It's life. Um, Austria just had an election. The Green Vegan Party isn't the parliament kind. It makes me happy. Isn't in the parliament kind of makes me happy. Um, yeah, I mean, I uh, as much as I'd like to see veganism go mainstream in a political, I don't like veganism being politicized. My problem is with those kinds of political parties that promote veganism, by and large, they're very leftist. Uh, and a lot of times they're pretty extreme. Um, and they're the ones that will just open your, your fucking borders of your country. Um, the political discussion. So we're going to move along. <clears throat> hey, Corey, uh, what are the benefits of lentils? Well, actually, it's a good thing you asked. Um, I did a video about protein, vegan protein, uh, I'd say about a half a year ago, might have been about a year ago. Can't, I, my time frame reference in terms of the videos I do, I don't always get it right. Uh, but it was about what, I think it's called Which Protein is Best, uh, was the name of the video, and it had the Hodge twins on the, on the uh, thumbnail. Um, I talked about lentils in that video. They actually took starving children, or malnourished children. Don't ask me the ethics behind how they got this, but maybe they were already from a bad situation as it was. Um, I'm sure they didn't starve children for the study. That would be against, um, you know, that that's a that's illegal. Uh, but anyway, the, nonetheless, there were starving children. They were malnourished children, and they fed some of the children lentils, strictly lentils, and some of the children, I, I guess, they were feeding them meat and other things like you know eggs, whatever. Whatever the case is, the omnivorous children and the lentil children both grew back to their original weight just the same. Like the protein, in other words, the protein content of lentils didn't affect the children um, negatively. They were able to come out of malnourishment and their nitrogen retention levels were fine. Now, I'm sure they didn't feed them, just like there's probably other things too, like maybe avocados or whatever, but lentils was their protein source. That was the protein source they used. Animal-based protein source they used. So when it comes down to it, yeah, lentils are a great protein source. Um, lentils, no, I mean, I would advise you have a mixed diet, but, you know, definitely consume lentils. I mean, I, I use beans and, and lentils in my, uh, in my meal plans as well uh, when I'm eating carbohydrates and um, along with tofu or something else, you know, it's a great food source. Um, Corey, what? are your thoughts on full body workouts for naturals? I have done some research that show high volume body parts but suggest they're not the best for natties. That is true um, to a degree. Um, full body seems to benefit beginners the most uh, from what I've seen. People who are more in the research that is. The more intermediate folks have a slightly better, um, it, to, to really get nitpicky about this, 
full body is best for beginners for, for, you know, for quick growth, for people who are more intermediate twice a week is best marginally for muscle, but maximally for strength. Like you'll get more strength gains from hitting things at least twice a week versus a bro split. You'll get a marginally better muscle growth uh, doing things twice a week than using a bro split. But keep in mind, marginal, marginally better is still better. I mean, if you're going to give me an extra ounce or two of muscle, I'll take that. You know, for all the effort I'm putting in, give me everything that I feel like I deserve from the work I put in. That's the way I look at it. So, yeah, I, I would recommend you work everything at least twice a week. Now, if you have a lagging body part, what I will often do is I'll pull back on the frequency and volume, uh, what I suggest, on other body parts. Pull up on the body part that's lagging so it gets the lion's share of the work. Uh, and, and make it a prioritization for that body part. So let's say your arms suck or something. Maybe do back and chest and uh, shoulders and legs once a week, but you'll hit your arms up a couple times a week in a different way each time. Maybe one heavy-ass session and one like, slightly more lighter pump session. That's that's one way to, to be able to do a priority split with a specific with, with honing your frequency towards your weak body part. Um, what vegan foods, what the fuck, I just missed that. Um, this thing moves so quickly. Uh, what vegan foods can I feed my wife to increase her libido? <laughs> just ensure she's eating enough dietary fat. Um, that's been shown to improve sex hormones uh, in men and women. Uh, optimize. I, I, optimize is the better word. I don't want you guys getting the impression that if you increase your fat intake, you're going to boost your testosterone. You'll boost it if it's low but you're gonna optimize it as what you're really gonna do. So in other words, if you already have high testosterone, taking a, taking like, you know, certain kinds of foods that might modestly boost your test is only going to bring it, you know, it's only gonna optimize it. If you're already high, it's not gonna put it into like, you know, super normal, supernatural uh, range. It's just gonna keep it optimized. It's best for, it's gonna maintain your health. Now, if you're low testosterone, it might help you bring it up within the normal range. Now, if you're subnormal testosterone, like really low, uh, men or women, you know, if you have, if any of your hormones are out of balance, you might want to talk to an endocrinologist because that requires medical intervention. Um, what's the truth about ALA to DHA conversion? It's, it's not the best. That's the truth. But there are people who become more genetically prone from generationally eating vegan to converting ALA to DHA. Um, but it's not like the most optimal conversion. I mean, it converts. Yeah, but it's not like optimal. So I would recommend that you take a little DHA every day. You can get it in algae form. You can get it, you know, it's, it's not that expensive. A month's supply is something like 20 bucks. It's not all that expensive. Uh, and, and like, for, for instance, Source Natural sells a product. I think it's called Vegan DHA or something like that. Uh, it's one that I use. And it's algae-based. It's in, it's in vegetable um, gel caps. And uh, you pop a couple of those a day, and it gives you like 600 milligrams of DHA, which is more than enough of DHA. And then on top of that, I'll have, I'll take uh, flax seeds, like a, a grant, like a tablespoon of flax seeds a day. Um, and that that all works. That 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 will work just fine in meeting your needs. You do that every day, and your body will have what it, what it needs. You know, as weeks go by. Um, uh, your Irish ancestors were hunters. You are proud of your, your European heritage. Why don't you eat meat? Because I don't see the point. You're making an appeal to tradition. I don't see the point in living in the past in such a way. Yes, I can be proud of my ancestry. I can be proud of what my ancestors accomplished, but I don't need to copy them in every regard. I mean, there's things that we have improved that have improved our lifespan, and veganism can improve your lifespan. It can improve your health. You know, there are some things I think that are traditional that work, and there are some there are some things, and I and I mean that from a from a uh, you know, an activity and a uh, mentality kind of perspective. But there's some things about traditionalism that we've just improved. We've gotten better. We've science and medicine have improved, and we should embrace improvements where they're positive. So. Favorite vegan shampoo and conditioner and anti-aging products and routines. Um, Conditioner and shampoo, I, I, I tend to like the Giovanni brand. You can find it in Whole Foods. They're not tested on animals. They have a vegan label on them. And you can find them in, 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 in Britain as well. So they're not just, it's not just America. But Giovanni is one brand that I use a lot for shampoo and conditioner. 
just because I find that it works. Like some shampoos and conditioners, I feel like that you have to use a fuckload of it just to be able to lather it up. It doesn't really work very well. Giovanni works pretty well. It, it lathers on pretty thick. Um, as for moisturizers, uh, I, I use like a night, I, I use an eye cream for uh, taking care of any wrinkles that might form around the eyes, preventing those. It's really about preventative stuff now at my point in time because I, you know, I'm at that point where I can start aging really quick if I don't take care of myself. When you're a little younger, you can bounce back more. Um, but I'm at a point where I've got to be able to be more mindful so I can age more gracefully, basically. Um, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to take care of yourself. So uh, eye moisturizers, I use um, I use a, a, a vitamin E moisturizer and a vitamin C moisturizer. I also use, uh, and I, I alternate them day by day. And then I go out, when I go out to the sun, I always have a, a sunscreen moisturizer that I would use, and they're all vegan. Um, the vitamin E, I believe, is Jason brand. Uh, the vitamin C is Avalon Organics, and the uh, the sunscreen is Alba Organics, um, Sea Moss or something like that. I found it on the PETA website. It was recommended by PETA. Um, those are the products I use for those. Uh, yeah. Hi, Corey. I'm 20 years old. I've been vegan for nine years, and I was wondering, is skipping breakfast okay? Controls my appetite. Sure. That's intermittent fasting. Technically, breakfast is going to be whatever your first meal is. You're breaking the fast. That's what breakfast... I mean, it's pretty obvious that the, the meanings in the, in the, in the name. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's basically just intermittent fasting. I, I haven't had a properly timed breakfast, if you want to call it that, since like 2012. Um, at least since like maybe spring of 2012 is the last time I had a proper like 9 a.m. breakfast. I mean, I, I have, I have, and then I, for a while I was just doing like, I was eating at noon for my first meal. And now I've done this whole IF thing where I've been eating strictly at like, one or two o'clock, sometimes even as late as three o'clock um, on a daily basis. Um, so yeah, that's perfectly fine. It's actually healthy for you. The research seems to be going in the direction of it being good for longevity, anti-cancer, um, fat loss. Uh, you know, there's a whole numerous, I mean, there's probably other ones too, but those are the ones that come right off the mind right now. Uh, it's good for insulin. Apparently, there's some some research on that as well. But the big research seems to show longevity and cancer-fighting properties. Uh, so something to consider. Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with that. Um, just make sure you get your necessary calories in the hours you do eat. Um, do you practice meditation? Uh, I really should do more. Um, I, I've, I've done some meditation. I've tried, but I, I really should do more of it. I, it's, it's one of those kind of things where... It's a good idea, and there's a lot of research to support meditation for health, but it's like I kind of forget to do it. I'm so busy with so much shit that I kind of like just forget to take a minute to sit down and, and do something like that. I mean, what I do, I do do is I play guitar, which for me is like a form of meditation. It's a form of relaxation. It, it helps me unwind, and I do that every day, but it's not the same as like, you know, an actual meditation session, but it's, it's, it's relaxing for me nonetheless. In your opinion, is good sleep? Is good sleep or less than one gram of protein per pound of body weight more helpful for natural growth? Could 0.5 grams per pound be enough? 0.5 gram per, grams per pound is too low for an active lifter. Um, I would say at the minimum, go 0.8 grams per pound. At the minimum, if you're if you're very active with lifting weights, and it's not an either or situation. Good sleep is a requirement. Period. If you want to grow, if you want to progress, get stronger, be healthy, don't skimp on your sleep. It's not a matter of like, should I do sleep or do protein? Do both. <laughs> you know, this is not an either or scenario. What's your thoughts on isolated soy protein? I, I use it. Yeah, there's there's research to show that it, it doesn't have any negative impact on your sex hormone levels. Um, it also has it also has a high p uh, protein digestibility uh, amino acid score, um, which puts it right up there with like you know eggs and and even beef a very good source of quick protein if you're going to use it in a shake and you don't drink if you're not a if you're you know a vegan you obviously you don't consume whey products it's a great replacement for whey soy isolates fine i mean the only reason where it wouldn't be fine is if you have an allergy you know then avoid it um, there are people with pretty nasty soy allergies so thoughts on food combinations i don't see any point in that and just have a mixed diet i mean i mean have a, a of a wide variety of food every day you know, greens, uh, colorful vegetables, fruits, um, you know, beans, tofu, you know, try a variety of things. Um, just because you're going to get, you know, there are, this is true, 
some sources of food do have a lot like wheat protein for instance has a lower protein digestibility score so combining in that sense where you have other foods not necessarily the same meal but during the day or throwing some leucine in with that meal are ways to help boost that you know so if you're the kind of person who relies solely on wheat gluten you are selling yourself short but if you're the kind of person who's getting wheat gluten in one meal and perhaps you're having beans and tofu in another meal you're fine you know uh so just have a, a balanced you know some variety in your diet and that, that's 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 my suggestion uh, what was the product you recommended for pain before? I think it was an herb. It is an herb. It's called Cissus quadrangularis. Uh, that's C-I-S-S-U-S. -S -S -S. That's a C. I'm going to make sure because sometimes it's hard to hear with this microphone. Um, and the last word is quadrangularis. But if you just type in Cissus, you should be able to find it. It's uh, it's an herb from Ayurvedic medicine. Um, that's, it's it, it's a, some kind of a climbing vine or a weed or something that grows out in like the east. Uh, but it has been shown in research to repair soft and hard tissue um so your joints you know your bones even if you have a break because they they've had some studies where they use scissors on people who had fractures and it halved their healing time so interesting uh, i know that i've had nothing but um great results from using scissors like whenever i have a joint pain or something if i use that for a few days gone just gone and when I go off scissors I can I, I start to feel the effects of lifting more so it's a great maintenance herb as well and it's not all too expensive you can get a you can get it in bulk um, you know for like between 10 and 20 bucks you can get a bulk pack that will last you a few months so is gum vegan depends on the gum brand uh, uh, there are brands for instance like um, uh, there's this one brand called uh, Spree. What the fuck is it? Uh, I don't have it in front of me. Spry. There's a there's a, a brand with um with uh, xylitol in it um, that I, I I use and it's vegan. They they make a licorice flavor, standard flavor, cinnamon, cinnamon, which I don't know why you want to mix those two, spearmint, and all the other ones. And that's a vegan uh, gum. Uh, but some gums may not be. You have to check the label. Uh, I like fasting in the morning, but I've heard it's it's linked to increased anxiety. Any thoughts? I've never read that before. I'd be interested in looking at a study, but I've never heard anything about that. Um, for how long have I been vegetarian? Well, I was vegetarian from 2002 to 2013. Um, now, I wasn't entirely vegetarian at that time. I did spend a little bit of time as a vegan way back in the day. We're talking about like, you know, late, like, well, late 90s. I tried it for a bit of time, and then I went to college. And then I went full on and dropped meat entirely in 2002. Uh, and I was vegan for a short time. And then I went and lived in Australia for a bit of time. And I became vegetarian. And then I remained vegetarian until 2013 uh, when I went full vegan. That's what I've been since. Um, so I haven't had meat since 2002. Um, but I've been full vegan since 2013. If that answers your question. Uh, best exercises for triceps. Uh, Johnny, check out my video I did recently about, I think it's called the six best exercises for your arms or something like that, or the best exercises for your arms. That'll, that'll, that'll land you in the right direction. There's, 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 and that was based on research too. Um, uh, somebody says that they're, oh, I'm not even going to bother with that comment. Uh, do a, rebut a rebuttal of Zverage, the raw meat eater who attacks vegans in every video and constantly talks about how unhealthy it is, K2, et cetera. I've watched some of his videos and it just was cancer. I mean, maybe he's trying to be funny. I don't know. I hope he's trying to be funny because if he's not, if he's serious, then he's an idiot. Um, and I think vegan gains has sufficiently destroyed this guy. You know, uh, you can get K2 as a vegan uh, without having the supplement. You can, uh, I mean, what else is he going on about? I don't know. I'd have the raw meat. I mean, he's a moron. I, there's not even any point in way. I mean, maybe I'll do a video about it if you guys really want me to do a video about spirage, but all right. Um, what if you had really bad indigestion, diarrhea every day from after like five months of being vegan? I'd be wondering what the fuck it is that you, I mean, like you, vegetables and fruit can't be making you that sick. I mean, what, what are you eating as a vegan? Like, what are you focusing on? Uh, like, you know, I, I can't, I, there's gotta be something wrong with what you're consuming. That, that's, that would be my guess. Or you're eating something rotten or something. Because, like, your body should be able to handle fruits and vegetables for health. I mean, if, if you can't, then you are the kind of person who's probably going to rely on vitamins and minerals supplements the rest of your life if you can't consume fruits and vegetables healthfully because it makes you sick. Like, I, I couldn't, I mean, I, I guess there's, there's cases like that out there. But 
Um, how is dairy harmful? The hormones are insignificant and skim milk doesn't have saturated fat or cholesterol. The IGF-1 thing is a correlation. Um, well, the, you say the hormones are insignificant, but there's been research to show, and I've linked it, in, for instance, in one of my VARG videos, it was linked, um, and I've done it before in a dairy video that I did about a few months back, three, four months back, um, that actually shows that uh, that, that the hormones that are in dairy can affect, negatively impact the reproductive health of children. And it can also affect the testosterone levels of adults and their estrogen levels as well. Um, I'm just going by the research here. You know, I'm not saying there's going to be, there's not outliers. I'm not, I'm not saying it's going to happen the minute you have your first glass of milk. It's obviously going to be a compound problem, sort of like smoking is. Like one cigarette's not going to kill you or give you cancer necessarily. But if you do it for years, it will. You know, and the same thing with alcohol or any other poison you can really put in your body. One time is probably not going to hurt you, but over and over again is where you're going to have an issue. Um, so, uh, oh my God, now there's a conversation going on back and forth here. It's going to move forward here. Um, what somebody said something about Alpha Destiny. Uh, uh, okay, Shit. Alpha Destiny is on the fence being vegan. He's just not 100% sure of its benefits. So would you ever consider doing a video to help him in transition? Sure. Um, I, I can't say I've watched his channel a lot, but I mean, if it would help the guy, sure. I'd, I'd do a video to help him out, uh, to inform him and any of his viewers. Because think about this. If I do a video to Alpha Destiny, if he's got a good number of viewers, they're going to get the same information because they're going to watch it because it's about the person they, that they care about. So they'll maybe learn something too. Um, so it's probably beneficial to a lot of people to do a video to Alpha Destiny. So I'll, I'll look into it. Um, is Satan tofu good to eat? I tried vegan Korean rib and it was delicious. Satan is just wheat gluten. Like I've said before, if you, well, if you don't have a gluten intolerance, if you don't have like a celiac disease or something like that, it's, it's not going to hurt you. It's not the best protein source. But there's ways to mitigate that. And it's also, you know, you shouldn't just be eating seitan. But having a meal of seitan a day, even, even once a day, is not going to hurt you unless you have some kind of problem with wheat, with wheat gluten. Um, Jackie says, I'm not defending animal products. I'm just vegan myself, and I want a more concise answer than it's just biology. Um, well, like I said, check out that video. I should, at this point in time, because you're asking, and you're not the first one, I should probably do a video on dairy. Uh, it looks like this is something people are, they want to know about, they want to learn about, and, you know, vegan or not, it's something that people seem to want to learn about. Uh, and I, therefore, it's worth the while, I think. But for now, I did, I have cited a study numerous times. I also did it in my Kino Body video recently with Kino Body and that other fucking guy, I can't even his name right now, the guy who is, he does videos with that Road to Ripped or whatever it's called. I also talked about dairy in that because Kino Body was, they were slamming soy, but at the same time, <laughs> this guy promotes dairy. Um, anyway, but yeah, I could do a video on that. Uh, anyway, uh, some people are going on about themselves. Best butt exercise. Oh, this I, I've actually been training my ass a lot more lately, um, mostly because I've had a you know a girl tell me that I should train my butt more. Um, but uh, the, the hip thrust is by far the best ass exercise. You can go really fucking heavy with it. It look, it, it, I will admit the hip thrust looks a little suggestive. Okay, it, it's when women do it, they probably fear that men are going to look at them because they're humping the air and their legs are kind of spread apart. But when men do it, it it it, it definitely feels a little gay. <laughs> I don't know how else to put that. You know, <laughs> it feels a little gay. I mean, you're humping air in front of a bunch of men who are pumping iron and grunting. It feels a little homosexual, a little homoerotic. But it's a it's a great exercise. Or ass. Um, it's not just your butt, it hits your quads like hell. It really hits the quads. So when you do the hip thrust, make sure you place your feet. Uh, I find that helps take out the quads a bit and add more butt. Um, and also it hits the hamstrings and it hits the calves at the peak of the movement. And if you go up more on your toes at the end of the movement and really thrust high, you'll hit the calves even more. So it's actually, in my opinion, from what I've seen in EMG studies, it is the best lower body exercise. It actually outperforms the squat because of the sheer number of muscles it works profoundly. 
So it's actually a great exercise. Now, I wouldn't take the squat out for good. What I would do is maybe squat heavy, follow up with some hip thrusts, like an 8 to 12 range, and then do the rest of your workout from there. Um, but it is a great exercise to add in there for your butt. Uh, so let's see here. Um, <clears throat> let's see what the next question is. What is your opinion on N Nimai Delgado's physique? Is, is it naturally obtainable? I, I don't know who Nimai Delgado is. Uh, let me Google the guy really quick because I got my computer open here. Um, Nimai Delgado. Um, images. Let's see here. Uh, some of these photos, I'd say yes. Like some of these photos, I'd say that you could obtain that. There's this one photo. It looks like it's a thumbnail from one of his videos where it's called Bi Biceps Motivational Workout. And, and this is one of the things, one of the tricks you can do. If you want to know one of the ways to tell if somebody's natural, or one of the good, one of the one of the ways you possibly can, it's still not 100%, is to look how they look in their training videos. For instance, like John Venus, to give you an example, John Venus takes some really great photographs where he looks he looks like he's not natural. It, you know, the lighting is good. There's probably a little bit of photo touch up in there going on, good angle, etc. You know. All gym bros know there's some spots in the gym that have really good fucking lighting. And if you take a picture of yourself, you look huge. Um, <laughs> and also there's out angling too that can be done to make yourself look big compared to somebody else who is considered big that may, that can help enhance your look. Um, but if you look at Venus in his training video, for instance, with Richard, where he, he visited Toronto and trained, he didn't look, I mean, not as an insult to John, but he didn't look as impressive in that video as he does in his photographs and his thumbnails. Um, and like I said, that's not meant to be an insult. It's, it, in fact, if anything, it might be a, a marker that John is actually natural. Um, and so looking at this, this Nimai photograph, I'm even pronouncing that right. If I'm not, I apologize. Compared to his actual photos, this photo of him, you know, doing the curls, he's doing a uh, high cable curls. I, I, that could be natural. I mean, he's cut the fuck, and that will make him look bigger because more your muscularity is enhanced when you're more lean. But um, he could – that I wouldn't – that doesn't scream steroids to me. Now, some of these other photos – there's a photo of him doing a double biceps pose here again. Um, it's an Instagram photo. That could be natural too. But then there's some other photos <laughs> where he looks really jacked. It's really well lit. And I would say he's running low dose uh, test, um, possibly even trend or something, uh, from what I understand about what a lot of fitness models apparently use. That's probably something he's running from what I've what I've understood from reading about this stuff enough. But I can't confirm that. I don't know, you know. And ultimately, when it comes down to it, I don't really care. I mean, is he selling products and and using a <laughs> and using his body to sell products. I mean, then if he is and he is using drugs and he's lying, um, to, to, he's, he's deceiving people who might not be as educated to sell products. But if, if he's not, com if he's competing, but he's competing in a, in a, in a, in a non-tested league as an open league and give a shit. Uh, but yeah. Anyhow, uh, uh, Corey, how do I put on more mass in my arms? My shoulders, chest and back are growing. You may need to cut back on your shoulders, chest, and back and double up on your arms for a bit. Um, you know, see, do that for like six to 12 weeks and see what happens. Like literally cut back on the, mu the muscles that are growing pro profuse, profusely and growing really fast and push forward a little bit. Prioritize the muscle that's not. So maybe do arms twice a week. An example could be Monday back and triceps. Uh, and on your, your triceps, you know, workout, go heavy like dips or close grip bench, followed by some like extensions in the eight to 12 range. Two, on, on Wednesday, do like chest and biceps. Biceps, again, go heavy. Chin-ups or, or easy bar curls or something go really heavy with, or drag curls go really heavy with that. And then follow up with some like incline curls for eight to 12 reps. And then on Friday, hit your, 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 maybe your delts and your legs together. And then on Saturday, do an arm exclusive workout, but pump. Like, you know, supersets, tri-sets, that kind of thing with 20 rep range, um, uh, you know, sets, like three by 20 uh, with like two or three exercises back to back, no rest. It's going to hurt like fuck. I do this. 
and it's going to hurt like fuck. And this is actually something that I've incorporated uh, in my training routines for clients before. Uh, these big, huge tri-sets, or the, these, these, the fact that it's in Beast Mode by Science, my new ebook. There's a, there's, it includes some tri-set work as well. Hurts like hell, but it, uh, it works. It works. Uh, and there's research to show that the 20 rep range actually can perform really well in growing muscle. Uh, it's, it's about that metabolic stress. It's one of the mechanisms of hypertrophy. Um, and that's some science for you there. So give that a go. Focus on your arms for a while, like double them up, pull back on everything else, and give your arms a chance to potentially catch up. And make sure your diet is in check. Um, but don't stop training everything else because you've got to put mu muscle in your whole body too. Your body is all about balance and symmetry eventually, but some areas just are very slow to catch up. They didn't get the memo. So do you recommend multivitamins? If not, why? I take a multi for insurance. Uh, even if I'm getting enough of particular mul of vitamins like C, for instance, I'll take a multi for insurance because it's better to be safe than to be sorry. Um, that, that's, I've always felt that. I've done that since I was a kid. Uh, I'll take a multi. Um, and, and there are some vitamins uh, that have been shown that in large amount can actually make you uh, slow down aging. They actually can be good for you. And other ones that aren't, aren't so good for you. Like apparently vitamin D is one of those that if you – is it vitamin D? Fuck, it was uh, – I can't think of – I think it might have been D. Um, no, calcium. That's what it was. It was calcium. If you over-supplement on calcium, you can cause yourself heart condition. A bad heart condition, like you can get a, you can have a heart attack. Um, I don't know if it's because calcium deposits end up in your heart or what the fuck happens, but uh, people end up with heart problems from over supplementing with calcium. Uh, so there are some things you should be aware of. If you do get a multi, maybe don't get an iron-based multi if you have enough iron already, because there's some things that are very toxic. Uh, but you know, I do take a multi every day, uh, and especially when I'm keto. Like you guys probably saw my keto video, and everyone's like, "Why do you supplement so much in your keto video?" And that's because when you're ketogenic, it is not a balanced diet. It is not a balanced diet. I have to supplement because it is not great for health. It is a, a diet that I would use for performance reasons, but not for health. Not unless I was doing it because I'm epileptic. Um, and then you got to do what works for your quality of life. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's my opinion on that. Um, is hemp better than flax? Um, actually, flax is my favorite of the ALA-containing seeds, even over, over chia. It has more protein. That's why I think I feel like that I'm getting because I'm getting more protein as well as the ALA fats, the omega three fats. It's just better bang for your buck, essentially, or your caloric intake, however you want to. And I guess that's your buck. You're basically paying with calories when you eat food. Um, what do I think about calisthenics? There's nothing wrong with calisthenics. I think calisthenics are great. Um, I I mean, there are some people who do calisthenics only workouts. In my case, for what my goals are, or if you're into bodybuilding, I would say. Um, mix it, do calisthenics and weights, like maybe do calisthenics at the end, uh, or weighted calisthenics even. Like for instance, I'll do weighted chin-ups, weighted dips. Um, you know, sometimes I've, I've had uh, people sit on my back while I'm doing push-ups because uh, it's easier than putting plates in your back. I don't, anyone who's ever tried putting plates on your back during a push-up, even if somebody puts them there, it's really awkward. I don't know. It's easier to have someone sit in your back. That's what I found. Uh, but yeah, those are things you can make calisthenics even more even more difficult. But yeah, mix them up. Mix them up. De definitely do them. I mean, dips are a great movement. You know, chins are great. Pull-ups are great. Um, anyway, uh, what's the most accurate way to figure out your, uh, your, out your macros? Um, oh, wow. I mean, it, it depends on the macro. I mean, I, I, th there are formulas out there. And, and in my Beast Mode ebook, I break it down for whether your goal is fat loss or muscle gain. Um, and the fat loss actually is actually more of a recomp. It's focused more on recomping in that in that ebook. But uh, yeah, I mean, like it, it really depends on what your goals are, and there's formulas for everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, the rule of thumb is really keep keep protein around one gram per pound. Uh, fat should be around twenty percent of your uh, your maintenance calorie needs at least. No, and then carbs can make up the rest. And that all depends on your calorie intake for the day. Um, toothpaste am I using? Uh, some Ayurvedic brand, uh, fuck, I can't think of what it's called right now, but it's like a licorice flavored toothpaste. Um, it's got all these herbs in it and shit, uh, like neem and stuff. Um, I can't think of what it's called off the top of my head, but it's an Ayurvedic brand. It's got some really strange name. I found it in Whole Foods Market. You can also get it online. Uh, 
it's like a, it has a very hippie looking packaging. Um, Corey, do you ever work out your abductors by themselves? Yes, I do. Uh, I do abductor uh, the abductor machine, um, which is the, uh, the which is the bad girl machine, as it's, as it's known as well. Uh, good girl machine, bad girl machine. Just so you guys are aware of the difference, um, it's it's the yes or no machine or the naughty or not machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on what you want to call it. I've heard it called so many different things. Um, but yes, I do work that. Um, it is a really good way to hit your abductors. The only other way you can really do is like lateral lunges. They're not really attacked much during squats. Um, I personally train them because not only do I feel that muscle doesn't get enough stimulation otherwise, but it helps me with kicking, kicking height. Like, you know, guys like Jean-Claude Van Damme, for instance, who in their prime could throw a really high kick and hold their fucking leg there, it takes a degree of abductor strength to be able to do that, hip abductor strength. To be able to do that, to hold your leg up like that, it, it does take, I mean, there's other muscles involved too, but that is definitely involved. Um, I was in an argument the other day over whether hunting deer should be acceptable to tame their overpopulation. Any thoughts on the matter? That whole myth, one of the reasons why there are so many deer is because I think people bred them for the purpose of hunting. I mean, human intervention has caused a lot of these problems that people think the only solution for is to kill. <laughs> you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, their, their population, if we just fuck off and let them alone, will sort themselves out, whether by food supply or by, um, you know, just even this interaction accidentally with like cars, which happens a lot in New Jersey and Connecticut and places like that, uh, they will sort themselves out. Um, and of course, natural predators, if we don't fucking kill the natural predators too, like shooting wolves and shit, will sort themselves out. Nature can sort itself out. Um, anyway, uh, I, I used to do, oh fuck, question just fucking popped away. Where the heck? Let's see here. I used to do Herbalife, but I quit because I became a vegan. The only product I use for a supplement is Vegas Sport. Any thoughts on that? My only problem with Vegas Sport is is it's very expensive. It's very expensive. Um, I mean, I've seen like their buckets of protein going for like 50, 60 bucks. Like, and then on sale, it's like $39.99. It's like, fuck off. I mean, really fuck off. I mean, there are other options besides Vegas Sport that are really good. Uh, if you want to do over the counter, that is. Um, I personally do online bulk ordering. Uh, truenutrition.com is a company I have been using since 2012. Now, they're not exclusively vegan, but they have vegan options, and they have a protein custom generator that you can use that what you do is you can pick out, hey, I want 35% of pea protein, 50% of soy protein, 15% of rice protein. I want banana flavor, and I want to put in some probiotics, and I want to put in some protein digestive enzymes, uh, whatever. They have a whole generator that you can customize your own blend to your specifications, whatever you want. Um, I can give you advice on that because I use them on which ones I use. Um, and they'll mail it to you. It's their, their, their headquarters are out in California. You put that, you put your blend together, and in about a week's time, you have it at your doorstep unless you pay for fast shipping, then it's there in a few days. Um, and I, I'll buy like a month's supply, and then when I'm coming close to the end of the month, I'll buy another month's supply and have that shipped out to me. So by the time the other month's supply runs out, I have another one to go into. Um, that's what I do. But if you like over-the-counter stuff, oh, and if you use True Nutrition, I am an affiliate, I, and I, uh, but I use their products. So if you want to use my, my code, my affiliate code, VEGNUT5, that's V-E-G-N-U-T5, you'll get at least 5% off your order, and then I'll get points that I'll use towards my own order because I just buy from them. Um, so I believe in their products. I mean, I, I've had companies try to get me to come on as a, as a sponsor and I've turned them down because the stipulation was I had to quit other products I used. I wasn't going to do that because I, I, I look at the, the product, their products they were selling and they weren't necessarily bad, but I just like the one that I'm using better. So I'm not going to promote something that I don't, I would not want to use myself. Uh, that's just my, that's just my, how I, that's how I feel. But if you want to do over-the-counter, there's a brand called Raw Fusion, I believe it's called. Um, I, th I think it's called Raw Fusion. It's got like a white container, plastic, green writing, Raw Fusion. It's like 21 grams of protein per serving, and it has uniquely, it has artichoke protein in it. It's pea, rice, and artichoke protein. 
it actually is the one of the better vegan over-the-counter protein products that I've used. Um, and it's cheaper than Vega Sport, which is just so grossly overpriced. Sorry, long answer, but that that's that's really uh, my thoughts on that. Um, have I tried tree line ca vegan cashew cheese? It's delicious. It's made from cashews. You know, no, I haven't. I've seen it at Whole Foods, but I haven't given it a try yet. My favorite vegan cheese is uh, Miyoko's. Um, it's it's got it's like this Japanese uh, name, Miyoko. Uh, they make cashew-based cheeses, and it's they're fucking insane. They're fucking insane. Miyoko's is so good. Um, it, it, it's actually that good. It's a little expensive, but it's that good. Um, so if you want to treat yourself to something, it's definitely worth it. I've other I've used other brands like a, what is that one called Tree Top or something? Uh, I did a I did a video about it a while back. About uh, I did a couple cheese uh, videos. One was a cheesecake video that was Daya. And the other one, I can't remember what it, what it was called, but it was a cheese uh, video. I, I tried their brie cheese or something, and it was a vegan cheese. And it was it was pretty good, but that Miyoko's was fucking phenomenal. Far, far better. Um, uh, SRGO says, hi, Corey. Hi, back at you. I injured my lower back for the first time, and I lost back because I lost balance deadlifting uh, 315 by 5. I was horrified. It could be the discs, but pretty sure it was a muscle strain. Any tips to avoid injuries there? Use good form. Uh, was the 315 your proper weight? I mean, were you able to get quality reps? Uh, but it sounds like you lost balance. So that is just, that sounds like an accident. I mean, I've had accidents too. Uh, in 15, as many of you probably remember, I, t I actually tore a tendon. I believe it's a tendon. Let's see. A cartilage. The uh, TFCC is what it's called, cartilage. I tore a cartilage in my wrist. I had been uh, doing overhead extensions, and I was startled, uh, and I lost control of the weight, and it slipped out of my hand and popped the cartilage in my wrist. It ripped the cartilage. Now, it wasn't a full tear. It was a minor tear. It didn't require any surgical procedure, but it took me about a fucking year to heal it with a physical therapist getting the blood in there, because it's, it's, it's a non-venous area. So we had to get the blood in there by doing this deep tissue massage shit and then using electrical electrical uh, uh, attachment to my arm, um, as well as a heating pad. And I was doing that like, I think twice a week, I was getting that done. Then I went back to once a week. And in about a year's time, I was able to lift weights again normally. Um, what I did in the meantime is I did like, you know, neutral grip stuff, because I didn't it didn't hurt my wrist. Um, but you had to, I had to make do. But in your case, I would say, if it is a strain, I would get checked out if it doesn't get better. And if it is just a strain, learn from it and try your best to really stay focused. Maybe put earphones in if you have to. So if you got startled somehow, that's why you lost balance. But do your best to maintain good form. That's really all you can do. Understand that weight training is a risk. Um, you know, it is a risk. I mean, every time you go into a bench press, you could drop that weight on you. Um, you know, you give out and you get crushed. There's, there's injuries all the time, even amongst the most professional people um, who are involved in lifting. It is a risk, but you know that risk comes with great reward too. So, uh, but my best advice is just to be mindful, focus. If you have to listen to music to do that to keep the distraction of your environment around you um, from from harming you, that's that's the way to go. Uh, best exercise for your hips? Well, the hip thrust, the squat. Um, you know, those are those are great movements that will also affect your hips. Adductor work, uh, adductor work, uh, those will those will affect. But see, even your your see your adductors you'll hit with deep squats. If you squat and you have a slightly wider stance, your adductors are going to get hit the more that you uh, you widen your stance. The, the adductors are the ones you really got to kind of like focus on hitting individually because they're you don't really hit them with the squats very much. So you've got to like you know do adductor machine or cable adductor work. Uh, or lateral lunges, those sorts of things, uh, will hit your abductors. Now, there's some other ones too. Brett Contreras has a lot of moves for the abductors. Um, I have some great, the guys bring it up, Nimai again. He does have some really fucking great biceps. Th those are some good biceps. But that's genetic. You know, that necessarily isn't, isn't necessarily a sign of steroid use. You know, his body overall in, in the video that I saw, the video still, didn't scream steroid use. It's biceps might just be genetic. I mean, look at guys like Larry Scott. 
he did take steroids, but he had some fucking amazing biceps. And even other guys who used steroids couldn't achieve Larry Scott's biceps. Genetics. Some people have a good peak. Some people have longer biceps to give them that fuller, bigger, thicker look, which frankly I prefer uh, myself because uh, it gives you that fucking huge wide look. Um, and some people have like really low hanging triceps to make your triceps look fucking jacked. Like, like, you know, just this big slab hanging off your arm. And some people like me have really high insertions in the triceps. And no matter what we do, our triceps suck ass. Genetics, you know, work with what you got. Try to make the most of what you got. You can't change it with sort of short of surgery. You can't change it. So, but in the case of Namai, yeah, he's got great biceps, but it doesn't necessarily mean he's using steroids. It's, it could be a genetic thing, too. And yes, he's using his body to sell veganism. Thumbs up to that. Um, is it possible to take very low dose testosterone and face no repercussions? From what I understand, if you take tea, you are putting an exogenous hormone into your body. Your body will stop its own production. Now, some people can bounce right back again. And people argue, oh, no, no, Corey, you got it wrong because there's people who take it and they take TRT and they get, I mean, or uh, sorry, post-cycle therapy and they get better and they're, they're producing testosterone again. But there's also a large body of people who don't. The question is, which one are you? Are you the one who will bounce back again? Age might be a factor too, but are you one who might bounce back again? Or are you the one who's not going to? Are you going to lose your ability to be fertile? You, do you want children? Maybe you won't have the ability to have children. You know, uh, do you want to be on a drug the rest of your life? These are things to consider. Now, if you're taking steroids because your job depends on it and that is your passion and, and you're making a good living from that, you got to do what you got to do, I guess. But if you're taking steroids simply to look great, you can look great without them. And I try to impress that upon people in my previous video about Hollywood muscle that I just put up uh, a few days ago. So, I mean, you don't know which one you're going to be, if you're going to be one of those people who will bounce back or not. And, and, and worse yet, what if you're one of the non-responders? You know, there are people who take steroids and they still can't achieve the body they want. And then you're taking this exogenous hormone, you might shut yourself down and you're running all these risks for fuck all, for nothing. Think about these things before you put the drug in your body. Really think about it. You know, I want you guys, I want all of you to think about your future before you do something because once you do it it's it's you know some things are unreversible let's put it that way and fucking your hormones up is one of them best exercise for transverse abs uh the uh the plank is your best for that um but if you want the best exercise in general including transverse abdominals would be the ab wheel the ab wheel i can't sing the praises enough it's like the device was literally something from a late night infomercial in the 90s. You know, and it actually is one of the best exercises, one of the best tools for your abs. You know, even though it was just this gimmick on TV, it actually works. They've done EMG testing on it. It is better than hanging knee raises, than crunches, than incline crunches. It's better than all of those. And it also hits the transverse abdominals. Um, so it's a, it's just literally, if you can only do one ab exercise, I love the ab wheel. Highly recommended. It also translates to uh, to athleticism, too, because you you're have to balance yourself on this fucking wheel as you roll out and come back up again. You're, you're constantly balancing yourself. And it, you really feel the abs fire. I mean, if you've never done an ab wheel before, if you do it right, after your first time, the doms is insane. It's, it's fucking insane. Uh, uh, Sir, what is your favorite song? Oh, wow. That is a that is a really tough question. My God. Of all time, probably Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb is up there. Just because the first time I ever heard that song, the, the guitar solo by David Gilmour in that song made me want to play guitar. It's just a fucking powerful, earth-shattering guitar solo. It's beautiful. And there's two of them. So that's definitely up there. Um, but it's, it's really hard to pick a favorite song because there's so many good songs out there and it really depends on, on when you ask me, like I go through phases where I'll listen to one band for a while and then I'll come, kind of, I still like them, but I'll listen to another band for a while kind of exclusively. And then I'll listen to a mix of stuff and I'll, my, my favorite can change a lot as well. Um, 
Corey, I have a specific question. I was wondering if you could uh, if you could not eat fruits as a vegan, if vegetables could replace it in every nutritional aspect. There are definitely some vitamins and minerals that are higher in fruits <laughs> than in vegetables, but you can get some of them from veggies too. Like, um, I mean, technically, I guess it, it, it tomatoes are a fruit. I was going to say tomatoes. People consider them a vegetable, but they're actually a fruit because they're high in vitamin C. They're also high in lycopene. So if you wanted to eat a lot of tomatoes, you could replace, I suppose, fruits with tomatoes. I mean, you could, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. Why? What's, I've never heard of even people who are who have a low tolerance because of amylase production for starches can still get their carbs from fruits. I, I don't understand why you'd want to avoid fruit. Um, maybe it's something I've never heard of before. So I am curious. Uh, what do you say to people who don't trust science? I encounter some who think science is unreliable because it changes so often rather than trusting history. Um, there, look, science is about the pursuit of truth. And just because there is some bad science out there, and there is some fucking terrible science out there, just because there's bad and biased science does not mean, is not, is not an argument that all science is bad and biased or incredible or it, un, it, incredible, incredulous. I'm tired right now. I don't know which word I want to use for that, but, um, uh, lacks credibility. Um, though it doesn't imply that all science is bad. So, you know, that's just, it's just, it's, it's not an argument. It's not an argument, but there are a lot of anti-sciencers out there. Uh, they see one bad study and they assume that all studies are bad, you know, and that's kind of an insult to the good scientists that exist. Um, uh, history, yeah, I mean, history is fine. We learn a lot from history. And as I've said, there's some things that we learn from history that are, that are traditionally good for us today. But there's some things that we do better today because we've learned, like, for instance, advancements in medicine, advancements in science, advancements in nutrition, that, you know, if we did things the way our ancestors did them, we would be fucked. We would have short lifespans and, you know, higher rates of particular diseases. And, uh, if we didn't, if we live precisely like our ancestors did. So, you know, history is a great thing to learn from the good, the bad, and the ugly. What things to repeat, what things not to repeat. But science is a great pursuit of truth. Are there any exercises or things that can help prevent concussion in sports outside of avoiding high risk activities like and using helmets? Yes, strengthen your neck. Get a neck harness. It looks like a medieval torture device. And people will stare at you. I've been doing a lot more neck training lately. <laughs> you put this thing on, you strap it around, you tighten it on, and you hang weight plates from your fucking neck. It looks barbaric. It looks pretty badass. Okay, I'm going to admit, it looks pretty fucking awesome. You'll be doing this shit, like, you know, it's a head, a head bob thing. People will look at you while you're doing it. They do. I can catch them out of the corner of my eye. For their benefit, I'll start groaning and grunting a little louder while I'm doing it, just, <laughs> just to freak them out. But, um... In all seriousness, yes, the, the neck extension is a great exercise. There, and the reason I'm doing it is there was a study recently that came out that they took people who did nothing, people who did uh, shrugs, deadlifts, and other compound moves like squats, etc., and people who did all of those compound moves as well as neck extensions, three sets of ten reps uh, or ten rep max rather, three times a week neck extensions. They were throwing three uh, sets of ten. And they found that only the neck extension group grew their neck muscles and strengthened their neck muscles. That means that, that uh, shrugs and deadlifts and shit are pretty much doing fuck all for your neck. So if you want a strong neck that can withstand, you know, punches, kicks, football tackles, whatever, at least better withstand, I'm not say it's going to be perfect, and you want to have that, 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 that hulking, yoked look of like the rock, for instance, obviously... You won't be able to get that full look without drugs, but if you want to get an idea of that look, neck extensions. But do them right because you are working your neck out. I mean, come on. That could cause paralysis if you fuck up. So do not ego lift with your neck. Do not ego lift. In fact, if anything, start light. Get many and then adjust as needed to get to your 10 rep max. But do not use bad form and do not overload your neck. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to take a couple more questions, and I'm going to run because it's already 1 o'clock. Um, Corey, do you know something about low stomach acid? I think I have that condition. Unfortunately, I, I think somebody asked me this recently, too. I'm not a doctor, 
But my advice would be is if it's causing you indigestion, talk to a doctor for one, and two, see if digestive enzymes help you. That might be the way to go for you. Um, I have what the fuck? Somebody says, have you seen the the movie Beast of No Nation? Uh, no, I have not. Um, but I'll, I'll look. I'll look into it. Um, let's see here. Somebody says, when are we going to see a baby Corey? Ah, time. <laughs> um, how much weight and muscle mass did you gain the first year of training? My first year, as I recall, was around 15 to 20 pounds. Um, but I mean, I, I went in with the intention to just do it. Like I, I trained consistently. I went, there were days where I was working a long hours, as I recall back then, way back then, uh, where I was working long hours and I still got to the gym after having been mentally exhausted for like 10 hours. I would still go to the gym and push myself um, because I wanted to get it done. So consistency and pushing myself and trying to do it right, that did land me about 15 to 20 pounds in my first year. Now it got progressively slower after that. So it, you know, it did, it doesn't keep up. The second year was about half as good. The third year, well, it's been about the same since the third year. It, it just, you know, I, I bust my ass to try to get anything I can. So, um, somebody says I look like Brock Lesnar. <laughs> He's huge. Uh, um, I don't know if you mean facially, but body wise, definitely. He's much bigger than me. I definitely don't look like Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Um, uh, doing exclusively 15 plus reps for muscle mass. Um, it, it, 15 plus met reps is good for a pump, but I wouldn't, I mean, it can build muscle they've shown high reps can build muscle, but I wouldn't focus yourself entirely on that. I would do some heavy stuff, moderate stuff and some light stuff. I would mix it up. Um, and anyone who's used my beast mode by science ebook will be mixing it up. If you're using my program, you'll be mixing it up because I schedule you to mix it up the whole way through. Um, anyway, so I'm going to cut it off at this point in time. I will, you know, in a couple of weeks, we'll do another Q and a, um, and, uh, but thank you all for tuning in and I will see you guys around. Take care.